up with Mission Boys, Two Bros to Break Back with episode number four of The Bachelor. You know what? Caitlin decided to come back in between her, uh, the beginning of her date and the end of her date to yeah. flex on the ladies. Yeah. I decided to come in. I wasn't going to say anything, but in the spirit of Caitlin flexing on everybody, oh. I'm going to come in and let everyone know I want a little shopping spree of my own this weekend. Oh, baby. Got myself an Apple Watch. Hell yeah, dude. Trace. That's great, man. You know what I love about it the most? It's just chock full of stats of the night. Can you see it here? <laughs> it's got how many calories I've burnt, how many steps I've taken, how many times I've stood up and done deep breathing today. Yeah. I love it. Well, Lord knows you were burning calories today, man, because we were just sweating during this episode. On of the, the edge of my seat. Oh my goodness, man. Just sweating nonstop, so we got to dive into all that and more. But in case you did not know, we are two bros of brick. We're every week breaking on the Who's What's It fans or what? of Bachelor and Bachelorette Nation. So let's dive into episode four. All right, so we start off tonight's episode by heading from Los Angeles over to Singapore, which, shocker of the century and even bonus stat of the night, Bachelor Nation has never been to before. That's right, man. 23 seasons of The Batch, and we've never been to Singapore, and boy, those ladies were pretty pumped when they said Singapore, all, right? All it took was one movie <laughs> release of Crazy Rich Asians to be set in Singapore. That's right, all of a sudden, they're going there as quickly as they can. <laughs> That's uh, right, man. And they started off the first date with uh, Taisha, yep. a solo date. And as I got I got to say, I'm the RA of the uh, YouTube comment section on Two Broden Some Brick. Right. And uh, I see her name bandied about all the time as somebody that our commenters expect to be in the final four. And yeah. I didn't really have an impression of her of her before tonight, did you? Well, uh, yeah, I did. Because if you watched our preview videos, you'll know. She's my pick for next season's Bachelorette. Yeah, that was, Straight right. that was up, a bold dude. pick. Yeah. So put me in that list of the commenters that are saying Tasha's going to be going far. And I think after tonight, you can set that shit in stone, man. Because guess what they did for their date? Mm. They did a freaking bungee jump. And if you've ever watched The Bachelor and they've done a bungee jump, Jay, you know... That person goes far that season. The bungee jump always locks them in because it's this big moment, death-defying moment that they have together that they just hold on to until the final four. And Tasha's in there for sure now. I gotta say, I don't remember a bungee jumping date, but I remember a lot of dates where people uh, are brought on a date that is seems specifically tailored to a very particular fear that they have. Mm -hmm. And overcoming that does seem to be a foreshadowing of... A, a far run in the back. Just right? like DB, right? Yeah, Deanie Babies. Deanie Babies. Actually uh, overcame his heights by going on a, uh, fear of heights by going on a blimp. That's and, right. Uh, I mean, who among us wouldn't be terrified of going on a blimp? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the safest mode of transport, but uh, yeah, he had a little bit of a fault. <laughs> well, hey, but the real big uh, shocker of mm. this date wasn't what they did, it was what Tasha dropped, right? Yeah. yeah, which was all of her teeth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, she actually dropped some mad, mad crazy uh, life experience, which yeah. was, in the last year and a half, she has not only gotten married, Yeah. actually that would probably be even bigger if she was just married and <laughs> hadn't gotten divorced, but and since then she's actually gotten divorced and has re-entered the dating pool by going on The Bachelor. Which is probably bad news to Colton because that likely means that she's also had sex before. Colton, I mean, so... he's a virgin, but he's probably heard what's happened on wedding nights. That's right. Uh, but man, she's back in the dating pool with Colton on The Bachelor, and uh, I gotta say, I think Colton is not too turned off by that because clearly he's super into her by giving her the rose yeah. after she told him all about that. Yeah, just continue the streak of uh, telling a sob story and getting your rose. Next up, we got our group date in Singapore and it consists of leeches, cuisine, and uh, long lost relatives apparently between Colton and Cassie. That was a weird moment, That right? was an extremely weird mo moment made even weirder when Colton brought it up again while he's creeping his hand up her thigh. That's right, Colton and Cassie sat down with some dude who I guess was able to read the past. I don't really remember. All he said is, hey, in another lifetime, you guys were siblings. And Colton, for whatever reason, he hung on to that until later, right? Col Colton, like, wanted to make, like, brother-sister necklaces with Cassie and, like, <laughs> exchange it. it. He would not let it go. Anyways, man, uh, like we said, they did some leeches, they did uh, sample of the cuisine, but the real storyline of this group date was Demi v. Courtney, yeah. right? Demi v. Courtney. Well, and it, it sort of escalated to this moment where... It started by Courtney saying that, like, oh, she didn't feel like uh, she was appreciated the same way that Colton yeah. had appreciated other girls and the fact that Colton wasn't paying attention to her. But Demi, I thought, not only made a good point, but delivered it in a very, like, nice way of yeah. saying, like, listen, Courtney, you can be negative around all of us and bring down all of our spirits, but... Or you could actually be proactive about it and go talk to Colton. And from the way they cut it, at least, it made it seem like Courtney... 
wanted to sulk rather than actually do something about it. Right. Or she's just waiting for Colton to come talk to her. But let's not... I mean, this is freaking The Bachelor. He's on a date with like 10 women at once. Yeah. He's not going to necessarily go out of his way to make sure that he's talking to all these girls. You got to be proactive and go talk to him too. Yeah. I mean, you and I have been very strong uh, proponents of people actually taking action, even if it means grabbing him first or if it means like... Seeing him twice throughout yeah. the night and mean and someone else's time gets sacrificed because you aren't in a position where you can just sit back and wait for somebody to come to you. Exactly. Even though you might be accustomed to that in your regular life, you gotta have to adjust. So the fact that Courtney was all pissed because Demi talked to him two times yeah. when she hadn't talked to him at all, it's like, look, she's going out and getting what she wants. You can do the exact same thing. You just gotta friggin' try to do it. Well, and instead of carving out her own time with Colton, she sat down with Demi and decided to air out her grievances with Demi. And I felt like the whole time I was just wanting Demi to be like, okay, you could be talking to me or you could be talking to Colton, but you can't be, You can't have both. And if, we, if we've learned anything from watching The Bachelor, it's that when the ladies spend their time talking to other ladies about them talking about what they're saying yeah. about them, right? It never works out. Well, good. think about the maze you just weaved there. Like oh, I, yeah, I got lost right. in it just listening to Me it. Me too, but, man. I mean, it was all. <laughs> it all sort of culminated in this moment where uh, where Courtney said that Demi had no class, and Demi's clapback was that Courtney put the ass in class, which yeah. kind of sounds like a compliment. Doesn't really sound like it's not a really diss. A burn, no, no, not at all. But it was also like the line said before they went to commercial break. So it was like. Was well, that a compliment or was that a dick? <laughs> I don't think Demi won that right. round, but right. turns out she won the last round. Right, so the final date of the evening, uh, Colton takes Kaylin out on a shopping spree, right? right? She tries on a bunch of dresses, she tries on some shoes, some jackets. She ends up going back to her to her room with like 17 bags, yeah, seriously. showing off all the gear she got in front of all the ladies. <laughs> And that was the end of the day. Nothing else happened. <laughs> uh, not so fast. Yeah. But hey, before we get to what really happened on this date, uh, I just got to point out, nobody really went out of their way to say that Colton was paying for this. The way that Ari did with Beckett, right? Yeah, and you know, we... Interesting. We raised our eyebrows last year when Ari was the <laughs> one saying that like, oh, this is all on my credit card charge. I got to pay these off. That wasn't even brought up with Colton this year, and I think it was because it was far less believable <laughs> exactly. that he could actually afford this. Exactly. So let's talk about what really happened on this day, right? The elephant in the room, and yeah. that's that Kaylin finally divulged to Colton what she had alluded to earlier this season about some stuff in her past, and it turns out, I mean, it's really, really quite tragic. Yeah, I mean, she had been sexually assaulted. Uh, it sounds like it was filmed. Uh, it yeah. sounds like, you know, it, was, it involved multiple people, only one of which was held accountable. Yeah. Then had this crazy ripple effect out to her family, her friends, everybody who sort of uh, she's told about this uh, yeah. about this event, but you know, there's not a really great way that as somebody who's listening to somebody t share this story to respond to this. Right. If you're Colton, For right? Sure. Because you're in this mode of feeling helpless, right? You know that whatever you're gonna say uh, cannot possibly make up for the fact that someone that you feel close with is reopening all these scars and all these wounds to feel like for sure uh, they in something that feel like they need to do right yeah. or to take that step in the relationship having said that I'm pretty sure the right thing to do isn't to try to somehow backdoor it into a conversation about your virginity. That was really weird. That seems like the worst thing he could have done. I, the only th worst thing I could imagine him doing is asking if she wanted more wine. <laughs> I mean, that could, was really? the only worst thing he could have done in that moment. I hope this was a product more so of the editing than the actual Let's hope conversation. So. Yeah. Because, as you said, Colton... He kind of listened. Well, he listened, and then he he said something about basically, "Wow, that's really tragic." Yeah, I'm so but, sorry that happened to you. That's right. horrible. But then, just like you said, he did sort of figure out a way to like try and work his virginity into the mix, and almost be like, "Well, you know, people kind of ask me about my virginity, and it's been something that I've been afraid of." So yeah, I get it. Yeah, it know? was and a it very was really weird odd. parallel to draw with what she had just shared. Right. But even more so than that, I mean. I don't think it was really appropriate for him to bring up the fact that an ex, an ex of his had been through something similar, even yeah. though it's pretty public what happened. It's right. also not his story to tell. So On national television, I, too. Yeah, right. exactly. Like, if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, no cameras on, maybe I can understand that because you're not using real names. Yeah. But I think that was kind of a... I, I don't think he handled it very well in the moment, even though it's a very tough thing to handle. So For sure. I, I have empathy, but... 
Probably could have handled it better. But hey, Kaylin got a rose. Yeah. She's going to be around for next episode, mm -hmm. and she'll probably be around for much longer and after that. And because we just ragged on Colton, I got to say, kudos to Kaylin for just the... I don't know how to say it, but like her poise or her yeah. the strength that she demonstrated yeah, by sure. telling that all that I mean it on seems national like, television. Yeah, on national television. Yeah. It it was kind of a remarkable thing to see. So at the end of the evening we had two ladies leaving us, Courtney because of the likely because of the drama that we had earlier with right. Demi, yeah. right? And Tracy because why not? Right? I think he just forgot <laughs> Tracy was there, honestly. <laughs> yeah, seriously, man. But it would not be a two bros of brick recap without the two bros of brick stat of the night. This might be our most ambitious stat of the night. I know we've probably said that four or five times in the last couple of years, but this actually might be our most ambitious. We're for real this time, yeah. right? In the four or five years that we've been doing Two Bros and Some Brick, we have never, ever put as much time into a stat of the night as we did tonight. So I'm going to need everybody to sit down. Grab a pen and paper. Grab a pen and paper. Take some notes and follow along on this stat of the night journey because man take, we got a doozy just take a quick year of calculus <laughs> uh you know graduate with a five on the ap quiz because we're about to throw out some serious stats so this is the two part i'm gonna take the first and you're gonna you're yep. gonna wrap this it is all gonna be a long and, walk into a nice right. little bundle here go for it but we're gonna go back to the bungee jumping date because right. man, <laughs> that was the adrenaline moment of the night right but you know what's even cooler or i don't know what i'll say cooler but more adrenaline than that bungee the numbers that <laughs> yeah, that's right, numbers. Yeah. But uh, no, it's doing a bungee jump without a bungee cord. Yeah. Right? Let's say, for instance, the dude at the top, rookie mistake, just says, eh, I'm going to forget to attach the bungee cord to Colton. Or right? he got a $50 Venmo from two <laughs> Bachelor fans who didn't want to watch the season with Colton. <laughs> right. And so he forgets to attach that bungee cord. Right. How fast and how much is it going to hurt for Colton to hit that pool of water that's below him? Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you exactly how much because that was a 50 meter block that Colton was jumping off. Yep. We got that from the internet, believe it or not. Uh, but we did get it from the uh, website. The site that actually does those bungee jumps. Exactly. Colton's about 200 pounds, 100 kilos, give or take. Or I guess that's 220, but whatever. It's about right. Uh, which, after a little bit of velocity calculation, uh, we've determined that he's free falling for about 3.3 seconds, which means that he is hitting that water for a, a, at 32.34 meters per second, which is 72.34 miles per hour. And how much does that freaking hurt? Well, Matt? if you can believe it, none of the numbers we just threw out are our stats of the night. No, the we're fact, not there yet. In fact, I'm going to give out a few numbers that not are in our stat of the night. So when you land at that rate, from yes. that height, at that many kilos or pounds or whatever, yeah. You are generating 11,015 pounds of force upon your impact. Now, Damn. that's just a number. I don't really know what that means. Is Sounds that, like a lot. Is that right? like getting hit with an Escalade? Is that like getting hit with an airplane? Right, I don't know. Right, right. So I decided instead of trying to take it to those terms, I decided to take it to terms that Colton's familiar with. Ooh. I decided to take it to the football field. Okay. So a tackle in the NFL generates about 1,700 pounds of force. Damn. Which ends up being six and a half tackles on an NFL football field, which makes you think just how much force these guys endure every single day. But it also makes you think that's six and a half more tackles than Colton ever had in his full career as a as a professional football player. So Damn. That puts it into perspective. Damn. That was the longest walk we've ever taken <laughs> to do a very gentle dig at somebody. Oh man. But that... anyway, six and a half sacks, that is the that is the stat of the night. Hell yeah, uh, man. And six and a half more than Colton's ever had in his life. Hell yeah, man. Now what we need you guys to do at home is hit that friggin' subscribe button with eleven thousand pounds of force right now if you haven't already yeah, done so, and, right, man? And get prepared to go to the hospital because that will definitely <laughs> shatter your finger. Uh where can they find us on IG? Uh at the number two bros bridge. We're keeping our streak alive. I'm, uh, we're responding to every single DM. In fact, damn right. this last week we may have gotten a DM from someone named Sydney who may or may not be on the show. Invitations in the out there to come be on our show. That's true. You know where to find us at Two Bros Brick in the DMs because you're already there. So uh, until next week, we'll see you guys then. Adios, y'all. <laughs>